is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey, good morning. It's Chris Abraham of The Chris Abraham Show. It's season five episode 45, so I'm just going to noodle on about uh, Donald Trump for the entire time it takes me to walk uh, to Idito's Coffee. And because I'm feeling a lot of wind on me, I'm going to run this through that uh, Adobe AI audio cleaning tool because... I don't like the sound of the, uh, I, and then I'll run it through normalize and compression. We'll see what happens. But if you hear any weird, like Chris Abraham speaking in tongues, that's the result of the AI mishearing things and mistranslating things. So please excuse me. So I have a target on my back, which is to say, everybody thinks that I'm a Trumpy, but I'm not a Trumpy. I love Trump because of what it brings out in people. America hasn't really had a populist president in 50 years, right? And we really haven't had an isolationist, nationalist, populist president uh, in, 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 I don't know, I wasn't alive. So... While all of my friends have been losing, literally losing their shit, and while the entire federal government, the lifers, lifer govies, the, uh, all of my fancy friends from the uh, fancy group I used to go to, all the smartest people I know, all the sanest people I know, all the wise people I know, all the mellow people I know, all the circumspect people I know, all the yoginis and yogis I know, all the transcendent people of great wisdom, all the people I thought were the Solomons in my life, while they've been looking at Trump and having little literal Trump derangement syndrome, I want everybody to know that the world and me and all the populists in the country haven't been looking at Trump. They've been looking at you looking at Trump. They've been watching really, like, extreme behaviors that seem completely antithetical to everything that is spoken when one speaks as Solomon speaks, right? Like all the uh, talk about First Amendment rights, freedom of speech, due process, the priesthood, the hallowed priesthood known as journalism and reporting, uh, the hallowed history of the New York Times and the Washington Post, all of the respect associated with being both a, uh, being both a, what you might call a senator as well as a representative, all the concepts of fairness and gentility, and one is innocent until proven guilty, and the uh, hallowed nature of the Supreme Court, which has always been considered to be almost our own Solomons. All of these things have fallen to this concept of by any means necessary. All standards, all expectations, all every single vestige of integrity, every single vestige of willingness to be truthful, transcendent, to ignore politics, to ignore ignore partisanship. Every single person in this country 
who has establishment power over the levers, levers, and controls of the United States have collectively, from the very moment that Trump was elected, and shamelessly, not even in like the concept of by any means necessary to destroy this populist uprising, when it was the Tea Party only, it was something that was done, uh, I don't know, discreetly. It was done under a certain guise of paternalism and maternalism, that these were just uh, miscreants that should be uh, reintegrated or just have a little bit of a red flag on them or whatnot. It was, but this time the country is really scared. And when you're afraid, as I learned when I was a dive instructor, well, dive master, I learned that panicked people tend to take everybody down with them. So when I was a petty dive master working uh, in Hawaii, in Hawaii, it was my job to be the assistant to the dive master, the dive instructor. And one of the early things you learn as a dive, uh, dive master is that uh, when you have to deal with a client who is panicking or who, whose eyes turn as big as pies and you know is about to bolt to the surface, or when they start freaking out and you can tell that they are having a complete conniption, it is really dangerous to approach them face to face. You have to move up behind them and you need to control them from their, their bottle of air, from their tank. Because they will reach out and they will grab your mask, they will grab your second stage, they'll grab your regulator, they'll, they'll mess you up. And that's the kind of panic the country is going through because I believe that in a world where the populace, the, the general population, the gen pop, I'll call them from now on, instead of calling them the moral majority or the uh, whatever, silent majority, I'll call them gen pop. Up until now, the elephant hasn't realized that it's tethered by a sapling. Because when it was a baby elephant, it was tethered to the sapling, and the sapling was able to, to, to control it, to keep it there. And then when it grew up to be a full-size pachyderm, it assumed that the sapling was still able to, to um, keep it rooted. When we live in a, we live in a government where 20%, if not 3% of the people, super educated, super rich, super powerful, super connected, super shameless people, have control over, you know, 97% of the population. When my uh, buddy, Agent K, told me, um, Homeland Security, uh, domestic security, policing, FBI, Secret Service, local cops, and so forth, right? There is no ability to control the population unless the population controls itself. Because if the population became uncontrollable, there really are not enough boots on the ground to return the community to civility. Uh, the exact nature of cops and cop cars and of a threat of going to jail and of a threat of prison is to make you mind your own manners. But if your manners are not minded, if you don't mind your manners yourself, there is zero 
one can do to reclaim that control once the elephant knows that it can overpower the sapling with no problem once the elephant knows that uh that it's an elephant and that everybody around it is sort of a mouse then things get really scary like i i reached out to bard and to chat gpt yesterday and asked them if uh if a government knows that it's losing control of the population what are extreme examples of behaviors that that government is want to do and it's like it's like come on guys with regards to trump we all know that the moment he was elected there was a he's not my president campaign there was a extreme white blood level uh, white uh blood cell response to him there was an extreme cancerous response uh his his uh department of justice they were decidedly not on his side even though they professed loyalty to him all the fealty was a lie all the loyalty was a lie all the trump love was a lie um the establishment on both sides the neolibs and neocon com neocons uh by definition were having a complete conniption fit and being obstructionist every chance they could which is to say that none of the uh legal pushes to get the election which all the populace in this country still believe the election was stolen um i know that all the neo libs believe that the election was stolen in favor of trump but we know that nobody wanted him to be elected so the fear is is that he'll easily be elected this time and whether or not i believe that the election was stolen to make sure that trump was not elected i think that uh everybody watched everything happen in real time everybody was on their own version of of uh, IRC everybody was on their own version of Discord server and everybody was on their version of Twitter and Mastodon and they were seeing uh the numbers happen and they were seeing that at 3 a.m. uh the night of uh lots of things changed and people perceive it as no matter what happens in the next election uh Trump will have 90 million votes and no matter what Biden will have 91 million votes so um no matter what happens there's a perception uh by American populace who are watching I mean there is such a strong belief that it's you know not unlike the kind of uh belief that people have you know about uh 911 or what not like they see they see January 6th turn from a molehill to a mountain they see things like uh Russia gate and Christopher Steele and the steel dossier they see all these things collapsing they see the dispute that the hunter laptop was russian propaganda or 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 a uh, fake or what not they see that the very like within weeks those things are disputed and they are uh, debunked as false but it doesn't matter right um Kyle Rittenhouse didn't kill any black people. He only killed white people. But if you talk to anybody, Kyle Rittenhouse killed black people. Um I mean this is one example. So as I watch this happen, I'm never watching Trump. Trump is uh he's just a placeholder, right? Like he is an example of uh, he's a represent representative of all these populists these he is 
them. And they are not Christian. They are not against abortion. They're, they're not neocons. They're not GOP. They're not grand old party. Uh, if anything, uh, Trump and his Trumpers are the rhinos. Republican by name only or whatever. Um, Trump is not a Republican. Republicans are socially conservative, fiscally conservative, small government, um, traditionally speaking, uh, if we transition that to modern establishment Republicans, they tend to be uh, globalists, they tend to be adventurous, they tend to invade people, they tend to create environments where they get to um, use the moral high ground to um, to invade countries that haven't asked our permission, right? For example, hate to say it, but Syria and Assad invited Putin and Russia to help protect Syria against uh, the rebels and eventually the Americans. In many cases, we've been funding the Kurds, we've been funding um, lots of groups, we've been fomenting change, we've been fomenting revolution, we've been behind color revolution. I don't even know if the neolibs and the neocons have any control over um, uh, the CIA anymore. I think that maybe the CIA has control over the neolibs and the neocons, or they, um, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, but... There has been, it's been completely obvious. The elections seemed really dodgy. The fact that no courts would even allow any of the, uh, that was the first time I realized, I always assumed that you had your day in court. I always assumed that you had your day in court. But if you, but a judge can decide not to take your case. So you don't have to, win or lose a case it's as simple as you know not having the case go to court at all so there's that um and that's plausible deniability right if you don't have standing and if people don't perceive your argument as having merit even if that's politically uh even if that's politically motivated it doesn't really matter, right? Because at the end of the day, there's nobody at all that's going ahead and saying that there is or isn't corruption in the voting process, right? And I don't know what the term is, but there's this term in Islam where you get to basically do anything during a time of war and that all of your if you come into a place of needing to defend yourself and the livelihood of your people and yourself and your religion and the word of Muhammad, peace be upon him, then you can, you can adopt the behaviors of your, of your enemy. You can adopt, you can fit in, you can drink, you can carouse, you can swear, you can give up prayer five times a day in order to be at the ready for war to defend your way of life. Now, because in addition, the mainstream and the authority, let's call me authority, I don't know. Really, man, my, my buddy Mark is like the epitome of this. He is, couldn't be more establishment and he has so much contempt for Gen Pop. Like, he really believes that they're so stupid that you could do anything right in front of them. And they're powerless to do anything about it. However, 
there's like four to one, right? Four dumb gem pop for every one uh, 20 percenter who has uh, power, control, wealth, and authority. And so nobody's been watching Trump since 2016. Everybody, including people from around the world, are watching this bad behavior. They're watching Trump derangement syndrome. They're watching... Um, the fact that morals and standards are being completely thrown aside, uh, that, um, that, that, uh, holy sites such as the New York times and the Washington post have been weaponized, including, believe it or not, including, uh, extremely hallowed insider sites. Like, you know, for example, um, you know, the, the economist, uh, the FT, um, uh, foreign affairs, like all these things have been, have been used like a holy hand grenade in an attempt to destroy, diffuse, and disempower, uh, the populist gen pop of America. And now these are sadly... They're not anti-religion, right? They're just not religious per se. They're not, if you will, Christian conservatives. The gen pop, the worst thing, the scariest thing about the gen pop is they're not racist either. You can call them fascist. You can call them racist. You can call them this. You can call them that. Um, and a lot of them consider when they say, um, I want to protect and support democracy because democracy is fragile. And when you take those things in vain, when you say you are, when these people are people who served in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Space Corps, and uh, Coast Guard, or they've been marshals, or, or they've been paramedics, or they've been firemen, or they've been ambulance drivers, or they've been um, border patrol officers, or they've been G-men, or they've been, I don't know, even even Secret Service, and they've been all these people who have um, jobs with guns, basically jobs with guns, and they pledge allegiance not to the flag, they pledge allegiance to the Constitution. They purport to uphold the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic, right? So those people are gen pop, even though they probably take your paychecks and you feel like you really must rely heavily upon their discretion. When you have a job where you have pledged to uphold the Constitution against uh, enemies foreign and domestic, and someone else is just throwing around, I'm a patriot, I believe in the Constitution, I believe in democracy, and they're doing things like wanting to ban guns, or they're doing things like being anti-democratic, or they're doing things like um, turning the hallowed uh, priesthood of, of journalism into another NGO or another activist organization or uh, when everything is weaponized, things that used to be um, uh, enriching. They seem to be dangerous now. And when people are afraid of what they're going to say or when the happiness of 0.3% of the population is considered to be more important than the happiness of the you know, 99.7% of the population, when there's a, when words are weaponized, when there's overt censorship, when all of a sudden democracy becomes this overtly and pathetic, delicate thing that at any moment can be destroyed by, by a misspoken word, when, when people are censored, when when rioters, uh, when thousands of rioters are thrown into jail, when, uh, and this is all done in public in front of everybody's face, like 
everybody around the world can see this happen in real time, right? Like nobody's missing it. Just because you are, just because you are dominating, just because you have complete political air superiority, just because you are uh, America and Gen Pop is basically uh, the Mujahideen or the Taliban or uh, the poor robed people in the desert, just because you have tier one, tier two, tier three operators, just because you have um, F-18 Super Hornets and F-16s and F-35s and F-22s, just because you have stealth bombers and nuclear weapons and and the Rangers and the Marines and, and Force Recon, just because you have those things uh, doesn't mean that the world can't watch you decimate villages uh, without any compassion, without any care that these are your people. In many cases, this is being perceived as a, a hot, cold civil war. This is perceived as a type of of, of, of maybe not ethnic, but if you want to call it anti-white, then you could say it's a type of ethnic cleansing. Um, I wouldn't, I believe that it's uh, openly and awkwardly a cultural revolution. I believe that it's open and awkwardly perceived as a purity test. Uh, a loyalty test. Um, will you follow along with the nomenclature that we just make up and impose on you gladly? Will you embrace pronouns? Will you, uh, when asked, will you not know the definition of what is a woman? Will you, I don't know, Will you gladly consume uh, m movies and television and media and songs and so forth on the approved list, whether or not you would want to spend your money on it, right? Like, there's a lot of testing. Will you receive the uh, mRNA vaccine? Will you be vaccinated? Will you wear a mask? Will you stay at home? What won't you do? Do you own a gun? Do you carry a gun? Do you possess a high-capacity semi-automatic gun with a box magazine? Do you own a semi-automatic rifle? Do you own an AR-15 style rifle? Do you own a Kalashnikov style rifle? Do you own a service pistol? Are you a concealed carry holder? How many guns do you have? How much ammo do you have? What kind of calibers do you have? Do you have a 10 millimeter gun? That's a bear gun. That's not fair. Do you... Do you run hollow points? Do you... I don't know. Anyway, I'm almost here at Ideto's, and I think that that's enough. But, like I said, it's not even about Trump. It's not even about the Trump replicants. Trump is sort of a unicorn, right? He is the... He is the heel in America's WWE wrestling match. And he's being overwhelmed by all these faces. And um, it's a stress test in many ways. The, the pop, the gen pop, have had an opportunity to see how people behave in environments where they're extremely unhappy with, uh, with outcome and behavior and the progress of things. Anyway, I hope you're well, and I'll talk to you soon. Mahalo. Love you. Bye-bye.
thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time. Oh, thank you.